I'm not gonna say you can't do it. I'm just gonna say like, if you can do it, it's gonna be a testament to your mental. Omar, any words of advice? Don't die, Zach, I believe in you. <sighs> All right, here we go. <laughs> All right, boys, let's load up a thousand. Yeah. This is 1,000 pounds. <laughs> this will be my top set today. Be great. Come on. Come on. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm back over on the powerlifting side. Do you want to pan around? Yep. The powerlifting side. Uh, and today, I'm gonna be lifting with an incredibly special guest. Hey Zeus, the strongest squatter on the planet of all time, Nico? Of all time. Strongest powerlifter of all time. Strongest powerlifter of all time. Potentially the strongest human to have ever existed in recorded history. What I'm gonna try to do is just unrack whatever he back squats. I know I'm not gonna be able to at a certain point, but I want you guys to gain perspective as to what the fucking weight is on the bar that this guy is, is, is doing. What is he gonna do, 940 for two? That's what he wants to do? There's no fucking way I'm unracking 940, bro. Really quickly, guys, go to barbellapparel.com slash Tellender. You can get all of my shirts, Lift Companion shirts, trademark logo tee. Let's get into this video. So the thing is, What's really important when you're walking out any amount of weight, whether it's going to be on the extreme side or like what you're normally using uh, to train, right? I think that you have a good chance. You just have to prepare mentally because the best advice I can give you is like when I'm detrained and I kind of try to like speed back into training and I haven't lifted like anything over like 85% on my back, it's really mental, like it's just, your CNS isn't used to like just the load. The yeah, load yeah, yeah. is gonna be the heaviest and hardest part because the amount of pr internal pressure, it's gonna, it's gonna be sending your body and your brain a bunch of weird signals. So I think, I'm not gonna say you can't do it, I'm just gonna say like, if you can do it, it's gonna be a testament to your mental your mental condition. How do you warm up to get to nine, nine whatever, whatever you're trying to squat today? What I've been doing as of late is I'll go two reds, four reds, and then if I'm feeling good enough, I'll just go straight to six reds, and then I'll do seven reds, which is 826 yep. with calibrated collars. And then that might be my last warm up. So I'll probably just go like set of five, set of five, set of three, yep. either a set of two or a set of one, and then straight to top. So you're doing 860 as your last warm up? No, 826. 826, and then you're jumping straight to 940? Nine, nine something. Nine something? If it's there. If it's there. If, it's there. if not. Yeah, I just want to preface that when you come into training sessions, like yes, it's nice to have numbers in mind, right? Because as an athlete, when you've been training long enough, like you have a deeper understanding and you can see the grand scope a little better, but you always gotta take what's there. Don't force it. Don't force it. I couldn't agree more. That's ex I I love that message. I mean, I've been doing long. I've been doing this long enough to understand. That, yeah, like I'm not just a power lifter. Like I'm also a content creator. Like I have a decent sized uh, platform, but I'm first and foremost a power lifter. So it's like my priorities are. I'm going to make sure that I'm just setting myself up to be successful when I need to, so competition, right? I'm four weeks yeah. out. Um, so it's like, I know what I'm doing, yeah. um, but I feel like people get so lost in the fact when they see my numbers, that it's like, it seems like I'm doing it for the IG, but in reality, it's just yeah, in right, relativity. Right. Yeah, of um, course. Of course, I mean, you're a pure athlete. You're an athlete, bro, you know, it's like, yeah. Is it, it's a different game for, for a content creator. Even though you, you do it, um, you're trying to do some serious shit. And I'm excited. I'm excited to see you, man. That, sh that shit at Sheffield was fucking insane, bro. How did that feel? Um, it, it felt good because Sheffield, to me, like, long story short is, all I merely did was show the world what I've always envisioned myself to be because, and I know Nico's gonna get this, like to me, 
like powerlifting is like a breathing style. You know, it's like, it's an expression of who you are at your being. And like what I do, like I try to be a master, you know, to be where I'm at, you have to like seek this higher level of proficiency where it's almost artistic, you know? So when I'm out there doing what I do, like, yes, like I have these goals in mind, like, yes, like I'm feeding my ego and yes, like I'm doing it for my family, for honor and glory. But at the same time, like I'm also like the final byproduct is like the accumulation of who I am as a person. Because yeah. the fact that I was able to get there, it doesn't just show my freakish <laughs> genetics, it also shows my commitment to the process yes. and things like that. Because like, it's not just about being strong, it's about being strong and technical. It's about being like, have, your technique has to be clean, yeah. especially on the highest stage. So I, I love the idea of, of the creativity, even in a sport that lacks creativity. You know what I mean? Like powerlifting, you know what you're getting every single time, but the the idea that there is like a slight percentage of that where you can show your creativity and that can actually allow you to be unique enough to be a, a champion, you know? I think that's I think that's amazing. And I think you're hitting it right on the head of the nail, man, because powerlifting is a three-lift sport and like obviously you have a limited amount of variations of what you can lift like you have conventional sumo you have like um back on your back bench or you have an arch or a close grip max grip or low bar high bar right so it's very limited selection but i do think that if there's like like it's like a video game like you have so many different skills you can work on to be the best right like you're like for me for example like i feel like i could pretty much deadlift anything that's on a bar but my limiting my limiting factor is my grip right so that's a skill that i have to get appraisal on and just continue to grind right. on a weekly basis it's like you know what i'm saying yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. there's so many different little things you can do right or like training your cardiovascular system so you can recover better between sets right yeah. at the ipf level that's extremely important because flights are so short and so fast so fast that yeah, at, the, at the elite level like the yeah. selecting how many are in your where in your flight uh, at sheffield at, so at sheffield it was a little bit unorthodox just because we had the women go first and there was 12 women and then there was 12 guys so it was a little oh, bit longer but like at worlds um if let's say like for supers for example we're gonna have like 20 guys show up they're gonna break it down into 10 lifter flights and those flats go by so fast. Yeah, it's like bing, bing. Like the meat will be watch them, man. They're just like slapping the, the weights on, jacking it, moving it to different locations, and then boom, you're up. Yeah, man, those guys are professionals, but it's like you literally have maybe a minute between each. I mean, not a minute, but maybe like eight minutes between each attempt, mm -hmm. and then you have 10 minutes to get ready for bench, and then 10 minutes to get ready for deadlift. It's not like at a local meet where yeah. you have so many flights, yeah. so many people in front of you, where it, it, the duration of like that time, you don't have it. So you have to have some sort of conditioning, not extreme, right? right, right, right. But you have to be willing to stay intact mentally and keep your composure, because I feel like that's where a lot of inexperienced lifters get affected it's like right. they don't know how to they don't know the experience or the sensation of having to lift right, maximum loads yeah. fast you yeah. know so all right man well let's uh let's get going here yeah, so, yeah, yeah all right let's get it rolling guys <laughs> i'm gonna warm up with squatting somehow i'm gonna figure it out i'm gonna warm up with squatting uh and then once the bar gets too heavy which is gonna be very soon uh, I'm just gonna try and unrack it. I'm not even gonna try to walk it out because that just seems really scary to me. SVD sent these uh, knee sleeves. This is the powerlifting style. This is the weightlifting style. I've already worn these ones, but I think for this video, I'm gonna be using these guys. Try, I'm just gonna squat it first and then see what's up. <laughs> I 
Feeling good, boys. I'll take a little bit more. Ah. Omar, any words of advice? Don't die. Don't die, Zach. I believe in you. I believe in you. <laughs> My boy's serious. If they do another, another red, I'm out. Yeah. How you feeling? Uh, right now, quads are lagging a little bit, but hips feel good, back feels good. So maybe we just gotta put some compression over the knees, quads, yeah. and I think we'll be all right. Omar Isof executing a fine cross armed front squat. Oh. <laughs> all right, there we go. That was all I needed to do. Hey, Nico. You make sure it's going. Yeah. Is it red? Yeah, it's it's red, but it's not the viewfinder isn't going. Oh, but yeah, that's the, the monitor battery. Okay, right. that's cool. That's cool. That's fine. Nice. Nice. Yeah. It's it's chill. Seven. Very chill. It's, it's a chill seven. Yeah. Don't people say I'm working up to a seven today? <laughs> I don't think this is what they meant. Holy shit, that was easy. I don't think you needed that 260. I think I think you were ready for a 275. Ready? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we got Mr. Clam Surf over here. Look at him go. All right, big dog. Jesus Christ. This dude's super strong. <laughs> All right. Come on, Zach. <laughs> Whew, that's really scary. Like even watching you guys, like it's almost like walking it out is like very challenging. It's not just the squat that you have to worry about. Yeah. 
walkout's I think that's what like the walkout's fucking serious. Yeah, I think that's what separates like a lot of untested federations is that aside from like PDUs, you also have equipment differences. The mono, right? You got the mono lift, you got squat bar, thicker diameter or deadlift bar, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I, that's a lot of differences that Dude, people don't Dude, you're fucking know. walking out a thousand pounds, <laughs> you know, like that's- Yeah, man. So uh, I was actually in the comments with an individual the other day, just talking about the differences and stuff. And it's like the little crazy part of me, you know, I, I take pride in being able to walk out my squats because when I see somebody else in the untest to do similar weight, but they're doing it out of a mono, then it's just, Mine's definitely more impressive. Uh, yeah, for so. sure, for sure. Let's go! Fuck off. Boys, hey, I want 804 on 21, please. I will be lifting 804 on 21, please. Holy shit, I'm actually getting real nervous now. Fuck. All right, let's do it. There he is. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Maybe I could have walked that, but you know what? Did everyone just see what I just saw? All right, boys. 435 on the bar, please. <laughs> I'm gonna do this and then I'll try 1,000. Yeah, yeah. This is Jesus, and he is the strongest squatter to have ever existed. What I'm gonna try to do here, second, I second. I can't take that away from Ray, not yet. Okay, okay, not from, sorry. But. Man, though. Strongest power lifter of all time. Okay. I'm going to try and attempt to unrack and simply hold the bar with a weight that this man squats. Here we go. All right, here we go. You got the big dog body right now. Move. Yep. I wonder how much I can do. Yeah. 
Daddy. Beautiful red. Beautiful. Up. That was easy. Come on. Come on. Fuck, let's go. That was fucked. All right, boys, let's load up a thousand. <laughs> yeah. This is 1,000 pounds. <laughs> it's a standing leg press, baby. This will be my top set today. I remember when I hit this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember my first time squatting 1,000. All right, let's go. We ready? Come on, Dad. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Oh my God. Yeah, that one actually looks like you had to work a little bit. Oz, you're seeing sounds? I feel high right now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Holy shit. All right, all right. That's it. That's it for the video. Uh, I appreciate everyone. Come on in here, man. For real. I appreciate you guys <laughs> letting me waste your fucking time doing this. Uh, hopefully now everyone understands how absolutely <laughs> insane this weight is. I think in a lot of sports, weightlifting, powerlifting, people see these movements and like, oh, I deadlift, I squat, you know, but they don't really understand the weight that's on the bar. And hopefully I can give them a visual representation of that, you know? Uh, where can we uh, find you, Jesus? Yeah, man. So you can find me on Instagram at Mega Gojira, Mega dot Gojira. Uh, I think on TikTok it's the same thing. And then uh, me and my brother, we share our YouTube channel. It's Iron Theory, the Olivares brothers, and you can just look up Iron Theory. But what's your IG pops? World Breaker Pops. Oh, uh, Mikey D on Instagram, and I think just Michael Davis on YouTube. And obviously. Johnny Candido training HQ. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it. I'll see you guys later.